All right, welcome to the Norfolk and Way Pal. Uh, this is my swing gate. I'll show you the construction underneath. I started out, it was just a regular bench right here, just like that. I added a couple hinges, one here, one down here, use some blocks, went on to get it up to the right height. I used a regular 2x4 to give me a good corner to brace on. I had, did originally have only this hinge at the top. This hinge caused the gate to flex quite a bit. It was either too loose, or if you get a really nice one, it's still better to have two. I mean, there's a reason why your doorways have got, you know, three hinges on them. Anyhow, come underneath, and this is the really important part, is this brace right here. This one goes up to the center of the table, not off to the side or in the back. You want it towards the center. You want to evenly distribute the weight on the hinges up here across each half of the actual swing gate. That way, if you're leaning on it or just years of years of use, you, uh, you definitely want the ability to have it so it can distribute the weight properly. I mean, I could put another reinforcing brace here and another one over there, but it's not really necessary. It's only open for a few seconds. Okay. Come up here. Basically, I made a cut through here all the way around. Look underneath here. I braced it in on each side. You can see the line there. Well, right up here where the gate swings through. I just put a simple little uh, bolt latch right there. And you notice here, I have a cleat underneath and a cleat underneath in the back. That way it rests on it. When this gate is closed and it's in operation, the weight is not being put on the hinges. It's being put on the entire frame assembly. So that if this side shifts, it's taking that side with it. Over time, if it's shifting or humidity changes, which you could probably see my dehumidifier going in the background there. But if it does shift, it doesn't shift much. All right, come up here again. Now you've seen the underside of it, and I'll show you some more here once I get it open. This is the operation of it. You don't need much room, less room the better. Basically, you want to create a radius where your hinge will be on this corner, just outside of it. So if you've got a compass used to make your radius for your curves, just use it for this and make your radius. That's what I did. But you come through, and I've got, as you can see, this cleat here. Get a better shot of it. I sanded it down a little bit on this side so if it did catch low it would hit and right up on and then a positive stop right there. Now something I seen or I decided to add myself that I haven't seen anybody else make is on the uh, other side of the gate I put these rests right here and again I sanded them a little bit so if they hit they'd bump up on. These are set there so when the gate is closed it's again resting here, 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 and here. It's on all four corners. The only time that it's resting on the hinges is when it's open. And there's one of my assistants. Um, now I've only got a two foot deep wide bench. I don't know how wide yours will be, but you can see right there, it matches up perfectly with my cork. The other one I have, I'll show you in a sec, it's not as good. But come back under here and I'll open it up a little bit. You can see how it, it rides on the inside. I built the bench first. I sliced that radius in there so that it would uh, it would allow it to rotate easily along that and that it was already part of the framework, which means it wasn't like I was trying to build it piece by piece off to the side and then add it here or add it there. It's I built it out of the bench that was already here so I knew it would fit. Now what I did was I built the bench work first. I made my cut, I added my swing gate. Then I went up and I did the foam. I added that right across it, effectively gluing the swing gate closed again so that it would be a perfect match. Then I cut the foam. Then I moved up to the cork bed and I laid that across there again, sealing it. And then I cut it. And then when I get ready to lay track across that section, what I'll probably do, and I've seen uh, Charlie Comstock do it on his, is I'll add a screw here and here that I will solder the actual rails to. 
I'll add some ties and try to hide it with ballast, but I'm going to solder the actual rails to two screws on each side. The screws, I'm probably have to get some pretty long ones to go all the way through this foam, but they're going to basically be an anchor point so the rails don't shift here. Because anywhere else you're going to have, you know, perfect ballast and whatnot, and I quite haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do the ballasting work here. Uh, it'll probably be a pain in the butt, but I'll get it figured out. Anyway, I'll do a screw here and a screw here, put my rails across it, solder the rails to that, ballast over to hide it. That way I know that they cannot move in that location. Now the really fun part is I'm going to have a turnout on this actual swing gate here. So that's going to be a kind of a challenge to work with, but I'll figure it out. Ah. I'll have contact switches and whatnot, and I would highly suggest building your own that your uh, train, your bus wire ends somewhere back along here, a few feet away from the actual swing gate. That way, when you have a train come through, if the gate is open unexpectedly, whether someone else, grandkid, wife, girlfriend, your buddy who doesn't know that you're bringing one through, the train will stop here instead of trying to stop here and then possibly plummeting off the edge. So if you have it wired up, so you stop, then run a separate wire up that powers just this section. And if it is broken uh, on power here, it cuts the power of the whole section. It'll be an electrical nightmare, I'm sure, for me. I'm not very good with wiring, but... Now we'll go over here to my other one. That's just getting my workbench here, and that's one of my nicer ones. And over here's my other one. This one was my first one. It's not quite as good as a mate here. I didn't quite get my radius right. But what I did was, and as you can see, it again mates up here right outside of a turnout. They'll most likely be there, so that's going to, again, be a challenge. But anywhere I had a joining, I sanded down the cork, brought it over here. Sanded this down, sanded this down, made sure I got the heights as level as I could. I actually just did an adjustment today. Uh, I just, all I did was I took, again, the same design as the other one, as you can see here. I just took this brace, I unscrewed it down here, I added weight to the top because it was bowed up, weighted it down until I liked it, took this brace, ran it back up onto the leg, and screwed the two screws back in so this way it would hold the center of it now. It's a nice adjustment, too, in case you have some warpage later on after you build it. Because in this case, it was level. But having that brace go to there instead of over here along the edge, you have it into the center, you can adjust that center. You can pull it down. So, and there's that. If you have any questions, just message me or leave a comment below. Uh, this is going on my YouTube channel. This is mainly a video, though, for a fellow model railroader that asked in one of my groups. Uh, how to build a swing gate. So I figured I would go ahead and post a video mainly for him, but I would take one for my YouTube channel as well. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll give you advice that I can and troubles I ran into. And thank you very much.